I tell you all of that only because I want to describe the morning that I was writing Thought Tools in Jerusalem. And there I was, it was a most amazing experience, because, and I, I, I sometimes talk about this, because there I was, looking out of the window at the old city's, uh, the, the old uh, city's wall, the wall around Jerusalem. And I was looking, literally, I was looking across at uh, the Tower of King David. And I was realizing that I was sitting no more than two miles from where David ran his court. Extraordinary. Meanwhile, I was on Wi-Fi internet. I was sitting in an air-conditioned room. I had electricity. I had uh, cool drinks. I had hot coffee. And I'm thinking to myself, this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. This juxtaposition is incredible. I'm looking at the ancient. I'm literally looking across where 2,000 years ago, Jews would worship at the temple in Jerusalem. Literally, right there. And here am I sitting with a computer, Wi-Fi, internet, electricity, air conditioning, an amazing juxtaposition. And then I stopped for a moment and I said, you know, Lappin, you're being sentimental. You know, it's not that big a deal. Because after all, you can get that juxtaposition in Istanbul, right? Istanbul is an old city, not quite as old as Jerusalem, but it's an old city. It's been around for more than a thousand years. I could sit in Istanbul looking at very old buildings and typing on my computer. Sure I could. Or I could go to uh, Tallinn. I think that's in Estonia. It's an old city, very modern today. I could look at old buildings while I'm typing on my computer. I could go to old cities in India or China and have all modern conveniences and still be able to look at things that are very old. So why am I getting excited about Israel? Is it just because I'm enthusiastic about Israel? And I stopped a moment and I said, wait a second, there's something different going on here. There's something different. You see, in China or India or Tallinn or, or Istanbul, there's nothing extraordinary going on economically. They're not creating massive revenue streams. They're not creating massive increase in wealth. They're not creating geysers of productivity. But in Israel, they are. So much so that I actually checked the figures. And, and here is the interesting thing. Typically, and almost without exception, uh, the gross domestic product, the amount of wealth that is created in a group of people is usually proportional to the size of that group of people. So for instance, uh, tiny Rhode Island is about the tenth of the population of the state of Georgia. Would you be shocked to hear that Georgia has about ten times the wealth creation of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, Rhode, of Island. Uh, Rhode Island? No, of course not. That's how it works. Well, the population of the five neighbors of, four neighbors of Israel, pardon me, uh, Egypt, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon, they have about 10 times the population of Israel. You would expect, therefore, that their gross domestic product would be about 10 times that of Israel. Be perfectly normal, wouldn't it? It isn't true. The actual GDP of Israel is a little bit more than the total aggregate GDP of all of those four countries put together. What? It's crazy. So is Israel's wealth very high or is the GDP creation of the other four countries very low? The truth is uh, both to some extent. The fact is that when you compare Egypt and Syria and Lebanon and Jordan to Sri Lanka or Guinea uh, or Nigeria, their GDP is not that different, particularly if uh, pro-rated out. It's, it's, it's not that bad. It's pretty typical. However, it's just that they're next to Israel as a neighbor, and Israel is skyrocketing with economic creativity, and it makes them look particularly bad. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, 
what is responsible for Israel's enormous productivity? Well, it's not that different from if you knew somebody who's incredibly productive and you say to him or her, how do you manage to get so much into your day? Well, I use my time very effectively. I don't waste time. People in Israel don't waste time. 